Welcome to our monthly Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Uh, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance conducted by Commissioner Harris. Have we agreed that you would? Yes, uh, I said I would be happy to fill in for Francisco to do the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, well, why don't you go ahead, then. Oh, thank you. Everybody stand, please. <laughs> Public comments. Uh, is, do we have any public comments? Yes, um. Um, Laura would like to present uh, a new employee oh. or a promoted employee. All right, very good. Well, we will um, shift over to you. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, um, Chair and fellow commissioners. Tonight, I wanted to introduce to you our newest uh, part time coordinator. That would be Aubrey Gahan. Um, she comes to us, she's actually been with the city since 2007, um, but she um, is now being promoted to a more prestigious role within our department. Um, we are very lucky to have her and to continue on with us. Um, she's been part of our special events team. She's been a um, very um, responsible teen lounge um, staff person as well. That's basically the program that she grew up with um, along with Allie, the two of them working side by side. Um, Aubrey is now going to be taking over the teen lounge program along with continuing on with special events and being a part of our team from the sports park. Allie's going to remain with us so we haven't lost her as well, thank goodness. Um, she's going to remain on with our part-time part coordinators as well. Um, we're just kind of shifting some duties and juggling some of the responsibilities, giving some of our part-time coordinators some more responsibilities with, along with um, special events within the city. So you'll see them Feel free to come up to them and, and say hi to introduce yourselves to them if, if, they, um, if you do see them around. So, again, just wanted to welcome Aubrey and introduce them to the commission. Welcome. Yeah. Moving along on the agenda, um, our, our person for the uh, ACT presentation is not present. I don't. Oh, you are present. Yeah. Oh, you're going to do it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do it. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, just for the record, this is our advisory committee for teens program. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Alexandra Gallardo, and it's my pleasure to be here representing Lake Forest Advisory Committee for Teens. I'm here to update the Parks and Recreation Commission about what ACT has been working on this past month. ACT members has have helped pre with preparations for the special needs resource fair in the Star Wars Family Night. They helped with their mascot and with the craft stations at the Special Needs Resource Fair. The ACT members manned the craft stations, game stations, and helped with the concessions at the Star Wars Family Night. ACT has also been actively working with preparations for our upcoming movies in the park. Um, ACT members look forward to volunteering at Aliso Creek Cleanup this weekend and Dino Days in June. We look forward to seeing you at all the upcoming City of Lake Forest special events. It's been my pleasure to run ACT for the past few years, and I'm happy to pass the program to um, my colleague Aubrey and as I transition to preschool and facility rentals. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. So I'm assuming this is a, you're temporarily representing the person yes. that normally does it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move forward to the Public Works Department project quarterly update. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, it's my pleasure to present Taylor Abernathy from the Public Works Department. Hello, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, I am the Principal Civil Engineer for the Capital Improvement Program, so I'm responsible for that. Uh, I'm here to present the Public Works Department's project quarterly update from January through March of 2018. Um, I have hoped that all of you guys have had a chance to uh, look at the report. Um, the report covers the five major categories of capital improvement projects here at the city. We have our facilities projects, which is our new civic center. Um, then we have traffic improvement projects, street improvement, environmental, and last but not least, the parks and landscape improvement portions. Um, to highlight a couple of those, uh, 
we have our ten, well, nine park shade structure uh, project that we're working on. Um, we're currently uh, out for the next round. We've completed the Barker Dog Park shade structure, um, and we're working with a consultant to um, prioritize and and get the next couple up. Hopefully, here uh, we'll actually get in through design, and before the end of the summer, we'll have some more shade and more of our parks. Um, also, we have the 10 Park Improvement Project. Uh, I think you guys have recently had that here and taken a look at it and received comments. We're in preliminary design. Uh, still, we're taking it to council here on the 19th for some additional direction on uh, where the program uh, should head. And then after that, I would just ask if you guys have any questions in particular on anything else. Any questions or comments? Okay. okay. So on the, I just want to let you know, these are comments that I hear from people and friends. On the shade structure they did for Bark, is it Barker Park? Bark? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. They said it looks like a big old circus tent. Just letting you know, I'm getting used to it, but they didn't like it. So I'm hoping when you do the other ones, they won't look like big circus tents. You'll have them. You know, like we have at some of the other parks? Uh, yes. Uh, so some of the different concepts we have are cell uh, types. We have the hip roof structure, which is that one. Uh, it's an economical way of providing shade across the, you know, rectangular spaces and that stuff. Um, and we're looking at the concepts of which, which type of which park makes sense, okay, um, given the environment and how it's there and what type of trees and that stuff that we have. So we're looking at some other other types as well. Good. That's nice. And then that we already briefly talked about. I just want to make the comment that I'm not happy about our plastic plants in the medians, and I hope that will not continue. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that said a lot of my neighbors and friends didn't like them either. So, so noted. based on Loretta's comment, I, I was surprised to hear you're using plastic plants on the medium. Yes, there are. Our maintenance division has uh, recently purchased some plastic landscaping. I don't know the exact locations of, in which they've installed them. Um, there are some locations, I think, in the future that could actually um, use the plastic plants again. But in the cases that I'm, that I'm specifically talking about are uh, medians that are currently dirt and they're underneath like the 241. So they're shaded, so real plant life will not grow. Um, but it'll give you a different, uh, you know, aesthetic uh, perspective versus having just dirt in the medians because we are looking at. at two is, I was just curious because I'm, I'm I've not heard of plastic plants being used in that way, and I thought originally that was more of a cost consideration. But you're saying the the rain reason was because nothing will grow, and that because it's shaded and underneath. Some areas are that. I think, uh, I mean, I, from my, my understanding, the plastic plants are not the cheapest thing from a so, cost installation well, perspective. Well, I would imagine, uh, just seems to me, I would feel uncomfortable with it. And you were hearing from some citizens that they are concerned of, of the image. And it's out of character with the city. Seems to me you guys can come up with better alternatives perhaps a ground cover or something that would be less obtrusive. So I certainly take strong objection personally to that uh, approach. And I like to ask for it to be reviewed, uh, perhaps to come up with alternatives. Sure, we can take a look at that. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Commissioner Rosenberg? Jim. Do too. Okay, well, we'll whatever is less easier. formal. Okay, Jim. Those years of driving a tank are coming back to haunt you. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, a couple of comments to echo the previous comments. One with the um, shade structure in the in Barker Park. Um, the shade structure in a, uh, say, a dog park is much more of a functional as opposed to an aesthetic, in my personal opinion, for whatever it's worth, and the opinion of a lot of other, obviously, cities that have dog parks, too. Um, 
this one really meets what it was intended to do in Barker Park to provide shade for both people and animals. We have that big area, you can have a lot of four legged and two legged creatures under it and taking advantage of the shade because when there's direct sun, it does get kind of brutal. So I think that's, you know, hopefully an understanding that people need to have. It's not designed to be a necessarily a showpiece, but something much more functional. Um, I will echo and much more strongly agree uh, with their comments on the plastic plants uh, from some of the comments that have come into my ears. Uh, there are plastic plants in areas that are not under bridges, medians, or they're on medians that are fully exposed to sunlight. Um, and I realize that, you know, maybe if you factor it out over 10 years as far as maintenance and irrigation and fertilizing and that versus the upfront higher cost of a plastic plant, you may come out uh, with a winner, so to speak, dollar wise. But um, I think it is a, an absolutely horrible decision to do something like that. It, it, a plastic plant is exactly what it is. It's something, despite cost, that looks cheap and is considered to be something because you didn't want to put forth the effort to grow plants, maintain plants, and things like that. And we have been, unfortunately, with a number of issues over the last few years that relate to the upkeep of live plants, sports park being a, a major, a major uh, sore thumb as far as that goes. So um, in total agreement, maybe if you can take that back. A couple of questions, and I'm not giving you baptism under fire or anything like this. But I had noted before I even knew that Doug wasn't going to be here, but on the page with the traffic signal synchronization towards the front, you have a fair amount of them where the, I guess the action column or status, you call it status column, it, it's in a two-year operation and it's pretty much the same for all of them going down. Does that mean that the mitigation steps have been, and correct me if I'm not using the right terminology, please, have been installed and they're now being evaluate, evaluated or are we not even to that point yet? No, the improvements have been completed and it's the TSS key projects um, have a two-year operation and maintenance component to it. So uh, for two years after the construction of the project, it, it stays in an O&M uh, Operations, so it's it, the improvements are done, and all they're doing is just continually monitoring. Uh, there's money within that federal funds that you get to continue to stay up with the operation and maintenance of. Okay, and what would that activity consist of doing then? Most likely, it's covering uh, our you know consultant ins inspection to go out and kind of take a look at it, make sure that everything's operating and functioning. If they put in. Uh, LED signs, hand countdowns, etc. within those programs, um, they would be making sure that those things are still functioning and operating, no bulbs are going out and that type of okay, thing. Okay, so it's, it's more towards the equipment functionality and maintenance and tweaking if need be as opposed to, okay, it was an evaluation we did of one of these corridors, we found something was wanting and now we're going to changes the synchronization schedule or things like that correct it's it, it from my understanding it's more of the improvement was implemented and then it's to operate and maintain that installed improvement okay are there any numbers with any of these that reflect or don't reflect improvement in traffic flow or lack of improvement in traffic flow I honestly, that I'd have to talk to our traffic engineer to find out specifically. Okay, on, I'd be interested in finding that out because I know this has been ongoing. Yes. Um, but on a couple of these corridors, and the only reason I'm singling those out because I do frequent them, the flow of traffic does not seem to have improved. It's still the same places where you stop or where you are stopped. Um, the same duration at a signal 
you know, in other words, I live here, I go down Altura, let's say to get to the five, it has taken me on a Sunday morning, it's great, but any day during the week, it is, takes me, let's say, 25 minutes to get down there. And sure. it still does. It, nothing has changed. So if I hadn't seen this or been involved and have heard we are doing this project, I would have no idea that anything was being done. Sure. So, and I, I, can, I can bring it back to yeah, Japanese years. Just if you wouldn't mind, I think that would be just interesting to hear um, you know, from, from that standpoint. I will note that from the traffic perspective, you know, on a lot of these projects, they're they're coming from a variety of different things. So it may not handle the one route that you take in a certain True. direction. Yeah, it may be a right turn improvement and that type of stuff. But uh, um, that that was increased. Yeah, I'm, but I was looking more specifically at this one because yeah. it didn't go. And some of them that you have detailed, it talks about the kind of subset of what's been done at an intersection. Mm -hmm. This was more of like a <clears throat> corridor that would go through town and maybe connect with Laguna Hills, Mission Viejo, or, or whatever. That's correct. And all I will say on those of those that I travel, it isn't any better in the neighboring town either. So it's not like they've done something, ours didn't work quite as well. It's still the same, the same bottleneck. Okay. Um, sidewalk repairs is kind of an ongoing thing because a couple of these have not traditionally been in this quarterly report. I think it's great that they are. But I read this to, to mean that it's kind of like you do with the ADA ramps. It's always something happening Correct. there. And I just happened to, interesting, as I was reading this yesterday, the um, across the street from us in one house up, they were taking out a chunk of the sidewalk, and I presume it's just something that was spotted and yeah, so basically we have a, a procedure for uh, inspecting and replacement of our sidewalks, both in the parks and uh, along our streets. Um, these programs we have now had, they're getting an annual allotment that comes into the capital improvement side of mm -hmm. it. So we have a standard set of uh, specifications that we can bid out now. Uh, we try to do um, specific areas and, and address the, the needs as we have funding. Yeah, which is good. I'm glad you put it in there because, like I say, typically those were not not put in there. Um, unfortunately, I used a red pen and it bled through it. <laughs> Don't doing this. I'm trying to read this thing. Uh, I know one of them was on the replacement of equipment in parks. Let's see. If it, sorry, oh, before we get to that, Portola Park. Um, as as much of a question for our director. Uh, as for public works, we saw a while back, and seemingly quite a while back now, a suggested design structure, would that be a design concept? Would that be appropriate to say that that is what's being used, or is there something that's totally news? Or That's what's being used. Um, the issue with Portola Park is that the developer hasn't yeah. given the land to the city. Right, they're, they're, I'm aware of that. Yeah. I just was curious if now that it's starting to go, if there's a whole change in direction there. Okay, cool. Thanks for the answer. Um, sports courts in in the various parks. Um, I think we initially addressed that. I want to say about a year ago if not maybe even longer, with a couple of specific parks in mind. Do you have any specifics, and I'm not looking for, you know, right now, but maybe if and when you, you put information like this in there that you could provide some specifics from a standpoint of which parks are being groomed for doing this kind of maintenance on the infrastructure within the park. Correct. So this CIP particularly, we're doing um, similar with a few of these other ones. We're, we're putting together uh, maintenance specifications that we can use on an annual basis. And so uh, it's looking to go citywide. I'd have to discuss with our um, parks uh, 
capital inspectors to find out which ones they have there but it, it is intended to be touching all the sports courts citywide over a certain period of time as as the funding allows so um, some of them may just be we're putting a multi-leveled specification so some of them could be full replacement some of them can just be painting refreshment of the of the surface and that stuff but so we can maintain them a little bit uh, better than they've been done the reason I'm, I'm kind of saying and asking for them because you have a schedule Yes. Already laid out, which would say to me that, okay, if they have a schedule, they know what they're going to do and where. I, I believe that I they hope do. so. They they know exactly what park it is. I've I've been working on the the specification with one of our consultants, and so, um, but I, and it just slips my mind exactly which one is the first to go. Yeah, because I I'll, I'll give you one example from a few years ago, uh, one of the parks, and I think it was mentioned here somewhere in in one of the things that you're doing was Cavanaugh Park, and I think Loretta can remember that too, it's a little bit of ancient history, but uh, we wanted to do some things with that park about eight years ago, and the neighborhood was very kind in telling us all, to include staff, that we could leave, because they didn't need anything, they didn't want anything, and anything we would do would bring more people into their development and their park and things like that, so we we try to listen to the public, and we did that. We put the money into into somewhere else. But I think again, it it would be helpful to have, you know, some. More, that's kind of just a tongue in cheek thing. Some more specifics about what we're doing and and where we're doing. It. And some need it more than others. Uh, are in, in in much much higher demand. Um, the park shade structure thing, which I think is a great idea to do, but again like some of the others there are no specifics involved of where are you what are you doing what um, and it would also be just nice to see what you're looking at I mean there's probably I don't know how many thousands of different choices you may have in utilizing a shade structure uh, you know some are really futuristic some are you know I think you'd want something that would kind of fit in with the character of the park, uh, and obviously different than what we have at the dog park, which has a very definitive functionality to it. But again, it would be nice to be able to reference those and at least see, if nothing else, a couple of pictures of design elements that you're looking at putting in. And, you know, I don't know, maybe it's going a little bit too far, but would we want any resident input on that? If, or not really it's just we're doing something that's positive and okay well maybe if we could have it just internally to look at and if there's something that somebody finds just totally crazy maybe then we could talk about it sure um, yeah we have our uh, consultant on board who's uh, gonna start getting into a little bit more of the designs and, and putting together some uh, some site plans and that stuff for uh, the various parks so at this point staff has gone out we've looked at the nine parks that were listed um, there were some parks that we feel have adequate shade but we're going to get our consultant to get out there and get some couple time of day photos to, to see mm -hmm. how that actually plays out and then uh, be able to concur with recommendations and then from there we will uh, like I said have some concepts that are going to be proposed with uh, some of the shade vendors that are that we've worked with um, in the past we recently got one recommended to us that uh, we included and sent over to our consultant to to look at using as well so um, and from there we'll we can definitely get you some more specifics on exactly what parks they are okay because uh, we, we have all that listed within yeah, our it'd be nice it'd be nice just to kind of see that and kind of understand what's going on we you know, also talk to people out in public and suddenly it's like oh I had no idea that was you know well, again this reports good it's, it's a good start compared to what we've seen in the past but uh, it would help to have a little bit more and then the last question I have kind of again along the same lines the park amenity replacements which again makes total sense to go out there and we're going to replace this here this there uh, based on on wear and tear and need again it would be nice to have a listing of where are you looking at going mm -hmm. what are you looking at replacing and then I got just a, a kind of an add side question to it. 
a lot of the material that you will pull out of there is of recyclable nature. Mm -hmm. What do you do with it? Uh, most of the time it becomes the property of the contractor and then traditionally they recycle it. it part, traditionally I would say it's in part of their bids. They, they plan on giving the materials and recycling them and if they can make money off them they do. Okay. Does that in any way go into the um, call it negotiation of the contract? Uh, it can. I mean, we you can write specifications that have it where they deliver us the materials to the city. Um, what traditionally becomes an issue with those is who and where, and that's when people put jokes and they put it on the chair of the commission that asked for its desk. Um, oh. I've, I've seen that one. I would have to say before, and so it's it's you know it's one of those things. Do you do you have the place to store them, um, etc. And here, no, I'm not trying to take it away from the contractor. It's that. The contractor should be able to, I'm going to use the word guesstimate, from experience, if they have experience in doing this, based on weight and composition of what they're pulling out, what that is going to bring them mm -hmm. revenue-wise. And as a entity that lets contract, we should have that same level of expertise resident somewhere in the Public Works Department. And then that can become a, call it a negotiation item. The contractor then still has the opportunity to, let's say, it's going to be a hundred dollars. We would just use some simple figures, but he knows, okay, I can go out and get four hundred from another recycling entity. Then that's his to keep. That's fine. So, you know, he can make more money that way. And the only thing in addition to it that the city asks for is a verification that it has been recycled because that then can go against sustainability requirements. And I don't know if the state comes down to the, the city level on something like that if the city has to file an annual kind of green, going green report with some agency uh, but that would help doing, would, would make that possible if there was a little bit more of a control in that. Yeah, there's a standard provision within all of our contracts from the City of Lake Forest that has uh, the recycling aspects of it, and they have to uh, contact Chris, uh, Christina Groves, who's our uh, management analyst. And so within those documents, it tells them they have to do that, and they can do weight tickets in a variety of different ways of documenting that because we do it from... Uh, our hall per, uh, perspective. Yeah, because you still want to winding up in the landfill. That's the end yeah. thing that you don't want to happen. And some of it can actually be used like concrete and that uh, can be literally crushed and reused if the specs of what they're doing call for, again, another concrete structure or platform or, or something like that, which cuts the one cost and two, a bunch of stuff being hauled and dumped in the landfill or whatever. Yes. So, but Chris handles that. That's kind of what she does? or yeah, that's one of the things that okay. she does for us. Yeah, I know her pretty well. So, all right. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, again, welcome on board. Yeah. Thank Seriously. you. Seriously. Good. Very good. So let's move forward to the consent calendar. The minutes of the regular meeting of the Lake Forest uh, Parks and Recreation Commission held on April 19th, 2018. Is there any comment or changes to be made in the minutes? Motion to approve. All second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, wait. Press the uh, appropriate <laughs> button. Let's go back to old days. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about coming <clears throat> out, so. <laughs> <laughs> reminded you of. <laughs> um, we'll have a, we'll have a voice vote. <laughs> <laughs> I already gave mine. Um, <laughs> You turned it on though, right? Oh, I'm just kidding. Very good. All right. <clears throat> Motion passes, and please note in record, minutes have been approved. Uh, discussion action items. Um, we're ready for the April recreational report. Good evening again. I am here to discuss the activities that we had for our recreation report for the month of April. 
starting with, as you see, the transition from class to the ActiveNet system. Yes, no. Tuesday was our first day of summer registration for Lake Forest residents. We had a very successful day. Um, we've been transitioning, Vicki and myself and um, some of the other full-time staff, we've been transitioning, learning this new program since January. So it's taken quite a bit of time, but it's, it's well worth it. And um, onboarding other staff for the last six weeks prior to our first registration day. The first day, just to get an understanding of how much registration we do in one day for the first day of registration, was a total of $82,000 in registration. That was at 5 o'clock. Oh. Out of the $82,000, $74,000 of that was online registration only. Whoa. So we were quite busy between answering phone calls, assisting. Um, Carol was up there. We had all of the staff that we could actually um, have on a phone, on a computer, um, being able to serve the public and the community and, and help them and, and reach out to them in any way we could. Um, this, this has been a transition not only for our department but also for the finance department as well. So we've been working closely with them to onboard them with this new program along with IT. So it's taken um, quite a bit of help from other departments um, within City Hall here. So it's been nice to be able to work with them and get them on board. Um, as far as activities goes, we had our third annual special needs resource fair. I know a couple of you were able to attend. We had over 500 participant guests um, attend the special needs resource fair. And from what I heard, I wasn't able to attend this year, but um, it was another great event. Maryland had over 53 exhibitors, which is amazing. I think last year she had about 35 to 40. So that program continues to increase. Um, of course, the 1st Marine Battalion um, was there also to assist um, in any way they could, helping helping out. And I know that you know both parents and children and um, any any special needs um, you know uh, members within our community were really satisfied with the, with the exhibitors that were there. They provided a great deal of information and education for some of our some of our families within the area. We even had the Mini Madness Therapy Horses. They um, attend the parade each year, but they are a super sweet group. They're very. Um, uh, great for, for not only special needs um, people, but also for, for all people, children and adults. Um, the Hand in Hand Square Dance Club, which is another special needs group, um, they're great. They're actually going to participate in the parade this year as well, walking and dancing um, in the parade. And Chick-fil-A has always been so, so kind to provide um, donated sandwiches for the exhibitors, so they were able to provide over 200 sandwiches, which was really nice. Marilyn was thrilled with that. Um, skate park activities. I know that you guys had attended. That was Ryan Sheckler's event um, this just a couple weeks ago. But also, there's been a couple events within the month of April. They had the Etney Skate Park um, skate competition. They also had spring break camp, and um, a couple different activities that are coming up. Some of their camps are filling up as well. All of our camps at the sports park filled up for the summer by 8:10 a.m. So last year they filled up really fast. This year I think it was even faster. And then skate, skate park is still filling, um, and they usually take a little bit longer to fill. But as you can see, even with spring break camp, um, those those also had 20 participants for the, just that week of spring break, so it's been great. Um, senior activities, they've been having a few of their excursions, their mini excursions. And as some of you may know and were able to attend the senior awards luncheon, we had over 114 people attend that luncheon. And Mayor Pro Tem uh, Leah Basil was there to present the Jim Sachs Award to the Volunteer of the Year, which was Judith Rosario. Um, so we're we're happy to announce that, and and the seniors worked really hard um, on coordinating that event. Um, it's one of our largest events for the senior division, so that was nice. The mini excursions. Um, one of the highlights was the Sherman Library and Gardens. They they seemed to really enjoy that, along with the Griffith Observatory. Um, we're winding down with Kids Factory, still seeing high numbers, which is really great. Um, as you can see, the end of the last page of that report, um, even though there was only 16 program days, they had over 8,500 kids participate within that month. So that's that's great attendance for them, and, and we'll have one more month of that, and then we move right into our summer activities. And if you don't already know, this Saturday we have the Elisa Creek cleanup, we have the Prelude in the Park at Pittsford. And then roll right into June with Dino Days and our first movie in the park. I would tell Francisco, but he's not here. But the first movie in the park will be The Lorax. So if you're interested, that's on June 15th. And the week after that will be our first concert. 
that will be the 80s concert that I've been talking about along with the car show that is on I believe June 24th <coughs> are there any questions thank from the report thank you the first concert first concert is 24th yeah Show's August. Oh, my mistake. I can't remember everything. That's why you're here, Jim. I have a comment. Mm. Okay, wait. I know you're right, but now I just have to check. Oh, you already checked the brochure. Yes, you are so correct. Yeah, just the, the 80s concert is on the 24th, but is it is not with the car show. The car show is August 26th. With the country music again, that's a very successful day. My comment is compliments to your staff. I always say that because these events is a reflective off the quality of part-time as well as full-time staff, and the results are pretty evident. Uh, I attended the special needs um, exhibit. What do we call it? The Special needs resource fair. resource fair, which I thought was well laid out in the two rooms that you had there. Although it was a little crowded, I think still was plenty of room to move around to visit. And you, you had those um, ponies, uh, or the ponies. miniature. I spent quite a bit of time talking to the owner. It's amazing. Yeah, I was very impressed uh, with yes, the horses. Well, you think I was talking about something else, or <laughs> no? They didn't. No, they didn't offer rides. So it was just they were there. Oh yeah, <laughs> I see. Oh, uh, I got you. At any rate, uh, that certainly is uh, well executed, and hopefully we'll see again. Uh, are you, is there plans to do another one this year, or or not? Is it the only annual? They're every year, yes. Every year. Gee, I wouldn't mind seeing one maybe twice a year if that makes sense. But I know the schedule gets pretty crowded, and but certainly something that can be looked at, I, I would think, because it was so well attended, and they had a variety of uh, vendors and services there that I didn't even know that existed, and uh, it was pretty impressive. And they had an advocacy group, uh, a lawyer firm, that specializes in working in, uh, as well. And it was pretty impressive, the expertise and, and services available to help uh, families and, and whatnot. So again, uh, job, job well done. The volunteer event um, that you mentioned was excellent, well executed. And uh, I, I really f found those type of events really bond everybody together because of a common um, passion for volunteerism, volunteerism or being a volunteer as I am and all of us here and uh, well done uh, there as well and uh, I'm, I'm excited about the future when we get our Civic Center so I think we'll see a wider uh, breadth of activities since we're limited physically in space and uh, staffing thank you anybody else yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I, I enjoyed the special needs resource. I think I talked to every single vendor and thanked them for coming. And, of course, I hung out with the mini horses. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> but um, this is a little off topic, but the mini horse gal said to me, said, oh, what, did you guys not do trophies? And I said, oh, we were, they kind of limited them. And she said, you know, that's. It's always goodwill when you do that, when you give more trophies. For what? For because she's an entry in the parade. Anyway, I'm just passing that along. Did okay. I said I was. I said I went off the side there because. Okay. I'm sorry, I got a little confused. Okay. But I guess the question: Are the mini horses going to be in the parade? They are. Okay, cool. They were very cool. Um, and. In regards to more trophies, our society <laughs> <laughs> loves trophies and as a result of it breeds people who can't accomplish anything because there's no trophy sitting there for participation, you know. A quick, more serious question related to the 
uh, rec report. The growth in Kids Factory this last month is rather significant. And not having a, you know, a history to, to look back to. Is there anything that may have caused that? Spring or? break. Ah. Spring break was the week of the 2nd through the 6th. And okay. We probably should have noted that in the report, but I had ah. a feeling it was going to come up. So. Good, yeah. no, because it's like it just jumped out. It was yeah. literally every site. And a lot of times that's where we you'll see an influx of registration, too, right at the end of the year where you're like, where have these people been the whole school year? Yeah. Yeah. And they just need it for that last week or even just a day during that week. Mm -hmm. And we'll get the registration of the, you know, the $50 just for so that they have a place to go. Yeah. 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 Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And I compliment you and your running mate who I guess has chosen not to be here this time. You guys on an alternate plan now, alternate <laughs> Thursdays? or? I know. I know. <laughs> that's right. That's, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. But again, this typically reflects a tremendous amount of very, very good work that's being done for the people in the community. And uh, um, yeah, compliments, echoing Victor to staff, full time, part time. It just seems they, they always seem to be the right mix. And uh, it's a pleasure to that. This is kind of like the favorite part of the monthly report because it's always got some really great stuff in there. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, anyone else have a comment or want to say something? Okay. Uh, before I forget, pass it on to Carol. Oh, can you pass that to Carol? It's his autograph. Okay. Welcome. Well, we're just zipping right along here. Uh, director's report. I have nothing further to add. Well, here we are at commission comments. So I'm going to start to my left, okay. and if you would please. Thank you. I think a lot of it just was was said or, or reiterated. Um, like Victor, the, um, the volunteer leadership luncheon was very impressive. Um, it was nice seeing the Marines and always, and uh, um, really enjoyed the camaraderie there. I think I parked it in the middle of all the uh, parade committee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing, but they are a good group. Um, the uh, the new bulletins and things that came out with the activities, you guys are going to be very busy this summer. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Um, and just one general question, I guess, or, or commentary. Are you guys doing any sort of hiring? Like, I know there's a lot of high school kids looking for summer employment that could uh, be put to work. And is there somebody I can direct them to at the high school? We've pretty much hired all, a lot of our staff. We we hire in April and March, and um, you could always have somebody put an application in, and if you let us know ahead of time if it's somebody that you know or would recommend, just let us know because a, a lot of time we're we've gone through that process, and and we'll kind of hang on to some of the ones um, until until we need to hire again. But we've already completed that process for the summer. Okay, and what what areas would they would you need the help in, or you said they're full. Well, I know for sure for the sports park, like all the camps and, and um, field ambassadors we just hired for, um, any of our little pioneers, um, rocks camp, unplugged teen camps, all of the camps, we're always looking for people. And then even throughout the school year, if it's somebody that can stay on board, it's even better than we don't have to retrain somebody. And it's not just a seasonal person, mm -hmm. but if it's somebody that's a seasonal person, um, That'll just be here for the summer or is leaving for college. Um, just let me know. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it. All right. Uh, Loretta, would you want to? Oh, of course. Thank you. All right, as I said, I already went to the special needs resource fair, had fun. Um, I went to Heritage Hill Fiesta Days. That was excellent this year. Um, and I attended the skate park, the Ryan Sheckler. And by the way, just put me on whatever list. If they need a list, just put my name on it, because I might, I'll probably wind up going. But they could, didn't have my name on the list. For parking? Oh or? no, 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 no! For getting in to the to the skate park. Oh. Are oh, you talking about the skate? Can I can I ask? Do you mean into the Ryan Sheckler one? No, but do you mean into the actual park? Well, yes. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> So the actual past the gate is what I'm asking. Yes. Okay. There's no list. 
But well, but next had one, and I wasn't on it. I wasn't on the I list either. I, I didn't even know that there was a list. Yeah, it's it's actually our staff doesn't run the event. It's actually oh, I run by that. the Shucker Foundation. That, but, but next year we'll try to we'll try to do that. Yeah, I mean, I I had to like. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I got in. Good. Had a wonderful time. I swear, every skateboarder is so nice to me, and they explain everything when I ask questions. I always enjoy going. So anyway, uh, then I also, we also, uh, Jim, and I, we, Jim and I kind of followed each other the whole day. Um, we, we wound up at the, going to the open house at the sports park, which is fun. And um, the May 4th, I thought was it, yeah. uh, that was really good. I, I had a chance to talk to several people that were there, and they all thought it was a great event. One gentleman was like, why wasn't this on social media? I had to go to the city website. It was, but uh, I don't know. He couldn't, whatever. So, but I just had to pass that along. Yeah. Feel free to tell them it's on social media. Okay. Well, I can't check, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I know. But anyway, and then um, one of the guests commented that we should have some more, some of the, to get you all hyped up for the movie, have the music outside playing in the patio. Which they did when they did the little, they did like a little contest. But I thought, oh. Okay, that was good, and I loved seeing all the kids dressed up. They were so cute. It was really, it was really well done. And staff, you know, they always do a great job, and they were in costume too. So I had fun. And then, um, in regards to the parade, I went. Uh, I do shop at Grocery Outlet, and I saw Joel, and he said to make sure to tell you he has his check ready to turn in. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. That's and that's it. And I know it's going to be a busy summer, and I hope to see you at every event because I want to go to every event. And of course, if you always need help, you let me know, okay? And you know, I know you're going to do an awesome job. Just <sighs> chill out a little bit. Very good, Jim. <clears throat> okay, recap recapping the list, and I think this past kind of almost 30 days has been one of the most event filled in what typically is always very busy anyway but um, again starting with the Jim Sachs the senior awards was nicely done and it's always really nice to see the seniors that come appreciating one of their own mm -hmm. uh, acknowledging that there are some among them who go you know that extra step and, and do a little bit more than just come and I've got to be at table seven and nobody ever better sit there in my seat and and those things. It was nice to know, but just to uh, give um, Laura you equal time, the mayor also presented the award. So if he were to watch the video or the tape and heard that he wasn't mentioned, you know, he'd probably send you a picture of him as well, giving her um, giving her the award. But it was again a nice event. And something that kind of hit me after I left, uh, the food was a little bit, I'm going to say, different than what we've seen at a lot of senior lunches and, and these kind of functions in a very positive way. It was very, very good. And I happened to ask the, <clears throat> the girl as to... I'm sorry, it was a leadership lunch that where the food was, where that came to me. Um, it happened to be Urban Grill. But would it be possible when, even for our Thursday lunches and for these things like Jim Sachs' leadership lunch, where we have a caterer bring it in, to put, it doesn't have to be huge, but somewhere in the food serving area, a little bit of signage as to who it was? <coughs> Because we hear, even from the other people who are partaking in the meal, quite often some very, very positive comments. Oh, this is good, and I really liked, or they like a certain dish or something. And that way they could know who provided it. And then if they want to, on their own, go and have a meal there, it kind of, they'll keep the money in Lake Forest type thing. And but and I think the, the caterers might appreciate that too, that they get a little bit of, hype out of it but no, anyway, the sax is you know again it's a well done thing and um, 
I, I don't know who came up with the name for the award, but it was very appropriate. The drink water, the drink the, that was used um, for volunteering. Also, I'm going to the leadership lunch again. But um, that was really appropriate because he was a stellar volunteer in the senior part, but still a volunteer. Um, and that event, even though the format was very drastically changed from what it used to be uh, to recognize the organizations uh, in the city, the nonprofits and people who whose mission basically is to do something good for a segment of the population. I think it was not a bad effort to, to do that and uh, as opposed to maybe entertaining you know, a bunch of people from large companies, churches, school district, etc. Um, it probably hit closer to home for a lot of the people who are committed to doing something. So, you know, not, not a bad idea, but and again, very, very well executed. Um, in, the, in the middle between those two, and, and Loretta's comment and Victor too, on the special needs resource fair, uh, I think Maryland deserves a medal, frankly, for doing it and some kind of a, an opportunity to somehow recognize her for doing an absolutely outstanding job um, with what she's done, especially almost doubling the amount of exhibitors. And it's not only the logistics of getting them to commit and the time it takes to do that, but it's also all of the on-site stuff. And having watched how that proceeded in the morning, and we had 10 able-bodied Marines and one Marine spouse there who was as able-bodied as any of the 10 Marines, trust me. Um, I'm going to put together a little kind of, call it procedure or something, how to better use those people that she can maybe give, and you know, give it to you guys to look at, obviously, too, give to the exhibitors because they are, they come in a semi-state of confusion with okay, we're here, now what do we do, where do we go, and to have, you know, you come here, you unload, there'll be people there to help you unload, they will take it in and they will tell you, go into that room, you know, that type of thing, and then they will help you break it down and, and just kind of outline it for them before they even get there. Again, one thing, and I have talked about it a number of times, when we have a city event like this, because you had twice as many exhibitors, and I want to say almost twice as many people, that came to watch and, and see and ask questions and see what was being offered there is for let's say half a day that we have that event it's a city event I think on our chart of priorities the city is plus one and then you have a gap and then you have the next nonprofit group that we know the dates in advance that the groups are notified that let's say on whatever this was September um, April 28th you will have to plan your schedule because you won't have use of the park till let's say 1 p.m. as opposed to 8 or 8.30, whatever the start time is. And that makes it easier for people to come. Uh, you know, we didn't have that many people that were special needs and, and needed mobility assistance. But if we did, it's easier. They can park closer. They don't have to put up with the, the maddening crowd. And other cities do this. This is not, uh, you know, something that is heretical or nobody will do it. They, that's a city event. The city has the priority and the groups all live with it and can do it. And so they just have to, you know, work their schedule out and maybe use another field if they really need that badly for half a day. But that would make it, again, easier for um, the people to do. And then we had, she described, we kind of spent the day together, uh, starting with Rancho Fiesta Days, Ryan Sheckler, and uh, the uh, open, house. open house, the hot dog feeding frenzy. Um, the only disappointment I had in Rancho Fiesta Days, um, Victor had promised me he would be there in costume, <laughs> and he wasn't. So, okay, the bill will be in the mail for the psychiatric treatment, the disappointment. Um, because you do eat, do good in class, but again, three well done, good events, um, and uh, before that, of course, we had 
May the fourth be with you. Um, it, it was, again, you guys have the right people as the coordinators who will dress up, who will have a smile on their face, whether they're dressed in costume or not dressed in costume, everybody having a good time. And I think the experiment has not proven it'll work. So maybe there's a thought process, and I may not have the right people because I was thinking, hey, maybe we can do a Forrest Gump type thing or something, but there are, easy, there are groupies for things like Harry Potter, etc., that maybe a quarterly theme event, kind of just along the same schedule and same, we have a movie, we have some fun and games, and we do something once a quarter and you had a, the people there were of all ages and they were it wasn't just kids or younger kids or older kids or you know adults bringing them and totally bored um, I mean even some adults tried to make a what was that cookie thing of the oh it was a planet yeah make a planet with a cookie cookie decorating yeah that was I know some adults had a lot of fun with that one so it yeah uh, it was again great event so, I want to do that. Um, a plug to economic development, the business seminar uh, that they had last week, well attended, good speakers, um, again, nicely organized, and uh, <coughs> uh, people there all had very, very positive uh, comments with it. Um, and among other things, got involved with the thing at Saddleback Church where they had their art, art festival, artisan festival, and we had a pop-up city hall there again. We've now, Jonathan now is bringing out with the literature, the leaflet and the Leisure Times, the latest one, <coughs> which is a nice addition to what we all are involved with. And again, a fair amount of questions all across the board from people that stop by. Only difference there as opposed to Lake Forest uh, more of a Lake Forest location, uh, you had a lot of people from out of town because they attend Saddleback Church. And uh, But still, it's a great opportunity to spread what we do and what we do well within Lake Forest. So are we looking at maybe having those at the concerts also, or is that... I talked to Jonathan about it and suggested it. I thought it would be a good place to have them. Um, so I think he's considering it. He hasn't told me which one he's going to be at. It's going to be a surprise. Just kidding. He has. He just hasn't told me which one he's going to be at. But I. But I do believe that he'll be at either the one in June or in August at the sports park. And July is. Well, I'm just. I'm just. We invited him to yeah, we invited him to okay. all three. But I told right. him it would probably be, you know, um, you know, nice and easy for him to be at the sports park, just because he knows, and it's a little flatter and. A little more t able to yeah, work around. Yeah, it's easier to set up than... It's easier to set up and... Logging it up to Pittsburgh. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I didn't think of that. Yeah. We can kind of store things there, you know, the night before and all that. But he enjoys doing it. I mean, we've he and I have kind of talked a little bit offline on that. And he, <clears throat> he really likes to do it. He's very outgoing and very, very good in interfacing with people. And, uh, you know, besides all the great professional stuff that he and Skylar are doing. So that's really nice. Um, a, a quick question. Larry was here, RJM, with the parks thing. When is that going up to the hill to the council? Scheduled for June 19th at this time. It, it became a little complicated because we're having to do to use a tiered approach because we don't we don't have money to do everything that everyone asked for. So we're trying to sort through that and come up with tiers to make a recommendation to the city council. Okay, maybe we can find money somewhere. Not, not anymore. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's some things we can eliminate definitely that people said they don't want. So you know, to some extent. Actually, that's that is actually part of the strategy. Yeah. Right. Say so. Build things where people said they wanted them. Don't build things where people adamantly want them. said they did not exactly. want them. Yeah. True. And. Okay. 
couple more things. At the first pop-up city hall, um, which was at Lake Forest One, we had gentlemen who came and spoke with the mayor and myself as being there about the sport of badminton and uh, was, you know, very passionate about it and as people are who are in some of the maybe, I'm not going to say secondary, but not not as popular sports from a total age level competition and um, wanted to use the sports park and, you know, we have this facility and on and on and on and uh, he both Jim Gardner and I kind of suggested to him that he prepare some kind of a presentation and uh, submit it, you know, to the city and be given due diligence on it. Um, what I saw based on getting a copy of what I think is the only thing he may have submitted, um, it wasn't really much, for one. Uh, he made the claim that badminton was, and he made it also in front of the council in public comment, that badminton was the second most popular sport in the world uh, from the research that I was able to do. He made that claim to us in person too. The highest they could find him ranked on any kind of an international poll was 16. And one, another one had an 18 and the other had a 20. So, um, you know, that claim is obviously, yeah, it's passion. You know, cut the numbers a little bit. But it, it to me brings up also a whole other set of issues. We've had we've had cricket. I know um, we've had one more, and I don't know if it was lacrosse or <coughs> excuse me, something else. Rugby. And regardless of what it is, we really don't have a procedural or disciplined way by which to evaluate them as opposed to maybe an answer that somebody come back and say, well, that's your opinion or yours or that. It doesn't really reflect that it was vetted. There's a process in that. So I would like to suggest and maybe ask for consensus that we do that, and that will involve obviously looking at what is being scheduled do they really need as much as they put in for in an allocation? Is it being used to see if we even have free space that could be considered? But it has to be a defined process. It can't be just, you know, on the fly and on the cuff. And the other thing, again, just as a caveat to throw in there, let's say you take the gym and it's laid out for basketball and it's laid out for pickleball and it's laid out for badminton and it's laid out for, I don't know, interior lawn bowling and volleyball and that you go on the court either as a player or as an official and you've got six sets of different striping in different colors and God bless you if you're colorblind. Um, it's, a, it's a miserable experience. It's not, not worth doing. So that all needs to be part of investigating it and the cost of doing it because there are ways you can put down lines that you can remove it's more tedious and time consuming which means expense but it can be done so I would like to suggest that we take a run at this and that like consensus from maybe one of my colleagues to look at developing a procedure in the you know fairly near future that we can vet these different folks that do come and probably will come in the Civic Center as well, that it could be the framework of something we could use for there, um, killing two or three birds with one stone. So is there anybody who would like to or? So moved. So I approve. Okay. You're on board. So <laughs> all right. We good? We good. We, we are. And also, the council issued similar direction. Um, okay. Just to clarify, I don't think there's a week that goes by where we don't get suggestions on new programs, new classes, more of something, less of less something. Of, yeah. And they're all good ideas. I mean, they, they all have merit. We, we can't do everything, but 
this is a good process where um, for certain things we would we would bring it to the commission and let someone give a presentation so for example the June meeting what we're going to do is uh, the gentleman's going to give a presentation on badminton and what he's asking to do essentially is to to he's asking the city to invest in the equipment paint the lines they're offering to come in and start the program um, which is not really a model that's consistent with the way we operate right. but we're going to let them give their presentation and then staff will also give a presentation to, to give the commission background as to what's in the gym now, what are the, the attendance numbers like, why, why do we do what we do essentially, um, and then we can, we can talk about it from there. Great. Okay. Good suggestion. Thank you. You're welcome. One more that deals with us up here. Um, and I've been belaboring this one for a long time maybe too long in some ways but we I think as we go into 2018 into 19 are misnamed as a group misnamed. misnamed and when you look at our charter um, which we always see in that report that comes at the end of the year prior to the chair doing the annual report to the council in January uh, there are some there's verbiage there for the kind of the Charter of Parks and Recs Charter of Planning Commission and, and things like that I think ours is like two lines theirs is a whole bunch of things but doesn't include planning which they don't do anyway so um, that accusation has been thrown out so uh, looking at where Loretta and I can remember starting from um, it was probably at that time an appropriate name we dealt with pieces of ground with maybe a ball and a bat and a swing and, and things like that and that was pretty much it uh, we didn't have a, even a full-time manager at the time for the department um, and I'm still trying to remember who that gentleman was I can see his face but no it wasn't Mark there was one other person as well Mark was the kind of the overseer and and yeah. This gentleman had two or three other duties. Um, we've grown humongously. We're going to grow even more next year. And we spend probably more than 50 to 60 percent of our time, if not even more, with things like special needs, programming for that. We spend time with the senior program. We spend time with recreational programs, classes that are offered, all kinds of different things. and it was really kind of brought between the eyes at the at the artisan fair I was talking to a gentleman who wanted to have a conversation about special needs programs he said I have some ideas I'd like to share I said be be happy to listen to you and he said can you give me your card and I'll contact you and we'll set up some minutes to talk and I gave him my card and he looked at it and he said parks and recreation what does that have to do with special needs and it was kind of okay it came out of the horse's mouth now time to get it out of your mouth Jim what I'm looking for a consensus on is to investigate start whatever the right word is the process that would hopefully wind up with renaming this body the Community Services Commission because we cover the same areas as the department does and it's not anything that we have to take a patent on um, there's many cities that already call the same thing a community services commission so it's not like we're suddenly rebels so having said that if I could maybe get consensus from one other member of the Commission yes um, it, <clears throat> I think it's worthy of the effort to submit the request for agendizing this for discussion um, perhaps at one of our future meetings it, it would make sense rather uh, since this is a non-agenda item I hesitate to open it up for discussion other than the fact yeah. that I believe from a Commission standpoint unless there's a uh, concerns I believe we're in favor of certainly uh, uh, considering that as an agenda item can I mr. chair members of the Commission so I have a recommendation um, the Commission may remember last fall you asked if we could change the meeting time. Yeah, we haven't done that yet either. 
It's coming, right? So, it's coming. but but I, I wanted a little background on that. So, um, when you were the chair, Commissioner Heron, you gave the presentation to the city council, and you asked them to do that. There was no response, but they didn't respond to anything. They didn't respond to any no, requests from us, to do. right? Or the or the planning commission. So we some of those we were able to shop around with the council members, and we're places where we achieved a consensus. Um, there are certain things that we're moving forward. So what I'm getting at is we are going to submit an agenda report, but it's to change the meeting time for all three commissions. So now there's the, the Planning Commission, the Parks Commission. There's also a new Traffic Commission. That's going to go to the City Council in July. Um, as part of that, we updated the guidelines for the Parks and Recreation Commission. And those are lengthy. And we, we simply updated it to, to reflect the actual number of commissioners, I think we added programming in there to reflect your duties as not merely commenting on park development and open space, but also programming. Um, and what I'm getting at is I'm going to check to see if, if I can also um, recommend that we change the name of the commission. Oh, cool. Okay. I'll explore it, and I will let yeah. you know. That, that would be the best shot to get it done. Otherwise, agendizing it and discussing it, um, is, it's difficult to take something like that to the city council. Uh, Whatever Is means there, makes sense. Certainly, I don't see any sure. objection. I mean, let's, yeah, no, I, that I, starts I, the ball rolling. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I just felt that we should somehow formalize it as, as something that we won't just ignore. Sure. And rather than keeping it hanging as a conversation, if you take that action, I think that would be most appropriate. Thank you, yeah, Scott. Thank would you. it be possible to see what you what you've created for? The, the guidelines. The, the guidelines, yeah. Uh, yes, and it's not radical changes. It's little revisions here and there, to, okay. just to update. But I, I can send that out. Yeah, I'd appreciate that if you would. And then <clears throat> the, the other comment I want to make is I don't see this as quote selling this to anyone. No. there is precedent in other cities, as you may know. Yeah. I believe the city of Mission Viejo oh, and Tustin. And Tustin. too, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I just think where we are in the development of our city makes a lot of sense to broaden. And we do have a reach already in some of these areas, mm -hmm. but to broaden it under our charter to make it clear. And, uh, ask, oh, we're having our California commissioners meeting. Do you want me to ask them anything? No. I, I, think, I don't think the question is that there are other commissions that are called community services commissions. I think that the question is can we change it here? What, what does that involve? I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I, that would be I'll try it. Yeah. If somebody were to look at you and say, is this something new or is this, you know, does anybody else do this? I'm not sure the five who sit up here on the council, the breadth of their knowledge necessarily, but then you could just, it's just a reply. No, it's not. There are several cities almost adjacent to us that, right. or adjacent to us that that's what they call the commission. Right. So, okay. That's fair enough. I think that's all fair. Yeah. What, what do you see as um, a turnaround time to get some feedback on that? Uh, maybe a week. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. I, I need to probably check in with the city attorney and see what's involved. And I, I will, as I, I've mentioned to you also, I've talked to three of the people on the council conversationally about it. And it wasn't anything that their eyes got big and they ran for the <laughs> safe room or something. And two of them said that makes perfect sense. It was sure. an exact quote. And they both said it different settings. So, got it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Hey, um, I'm done. Right. Is there? Oh, thank you. Uh, I just have a few quick comments. Some of it has already been addressed in earlier presentations, but I do want to uh, revisit the special needs. And um, Jim took a little thunder away from one of my comments, but I want to elaborate that. Um, as much as the event went well, I think it could have done better because we were competing with ball games and all sorts of other activities, which created a parking mess. Mm -hmm. And most of the attendees, like me, had to park at least a mile away. I don't mind walking, but it, particularly in special needs, if you don't get there early, you're going to have a challenge when you park your car. You had to park it way down the street and right off uh, Lake Forest Drive. So I want to reinforce the need uh, as expressed from Jim, and I want to 
build on that, how important it is to free up, particularly logistically. Because there was very no, if you get there past nine, I got there, I think I was one of the first to get there. Uh, you know, all the vendors and suppliers, uh, you know, all the parking was taken up pretty much. And I was just concerned about some of the participants who may have special need uh, requirements that they had to park so far away in order to get access to the exhibits. So I just want to reinforce, uh, reinforce that. I, I don't think I need to sell you on on that. I just think in the future we we should be able to manage that in such a way that that just goes away. Because I didn't realize they had ball games there. And I guess they had scheduled permanent games and they have all sorts of stuff and I didn't even think about it until yeah yes yeah, typical Saturday yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you so um, on the other uh, other activities there's a lot I mean the last few months has been very busy for everyone you know and uh, more to come I guess we're going into our summer period so from the Commission perspective uh, I think all of us try our best to attend as much as we can some more than others but uh, other than that, I'm, I'm just tickled pink uh, of all the events and how we have expanded ourselves over the years. It's just uh, very impressive. Uh, I just want to make a comment that I received a letter from the um, Association of uh, Montberry Homeowners Association. That was addressed to me, but went through the city and it was brought to my attention and how strongly they felt to maintain the passive nature of, of Montberry. And I, I do believe, based on our comments, that we reassured the audience that uh, that would be the case. I mean, there's not going to be any major deviations from the passive nature of the, of the personality of the parks. They were concerned, well, gee, we don't want to bring people in and to the uh, some of the facilities and open it up for rental purposes things like that so I think we peak their emotional side of them which you certainly got a response but that's the purpose of the workshops and the input sessions doesn't mean we're going to do anything other than the fact we wanted participation from the community and we certainly got responses back so all this letter really is came from the president of the homeowners association no, okay. Um, board of Directors. It's not signed by an individual. It was. It signed by anybody? No, it just said um, Montberry Homeless Association Board of Directors. Uh, I didn't see it. There's no signature on it. It. Um, that's the way it was. Uh, I, I'd certainly be welcome to pass it around if you want to take a look at it. What a comment on that. Bill LaFave, who. He's not a neighbor, but he's like not one of the streets. He's a long time president of the association. Um, and speaking for the association, what? Is your mic? Is your mic? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I thought the voice carries went out, but it doesn't get recorded. Okay. Um, the bottom line, and we heard the comments as well, the dog run is the part that they do not want. And again, I, I have to say as a homeowner and one who has smaller dogs and that area has a lot of real big dogs too putting them in with the smaller ones is going to be like dog sushi being created and all kinds of nasty things the passivity of the park I have all the syllables in there is it's a word it's not that they don't want anything I mean I know they were and even Mr. Esposito was agreeable to something like a gazebo or something that they could use that's usable with a barbecue and that they just don't want the dog run and that having talked to a number of other just kind of what are your thoughts of it and these are all people who have dogs has been no as opposed to just you know what do you feel if it was happening I make sure they have dogs because those would be the ones, in my opinion, that would be the most partial to possibly having one. And they they do have some justifiable issues with the parking and with that shopping center. 
in front of the park that takes up almost a whole block on North Crest during business hours because all the employees, barbershop and two other establishments that are still open, that's where their employees park. They don't have them park in the parking lot. So that, that's gone. And uh, so, you know, anyway. Well, the good news is that uh, we're not going to make anything that would be concerned of the of the homeowners there. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, we'll certainly do the improvements on some of the uh, aging apparatus and where needed more of the, you know, spiffing up some of the areas. Uh, that's certainly welcome, but no major changes in the personality of the park. So I just want to bring you to your attention uh, this letter and and uh, I feel comfortable that uh, that they will be happy with whatever they see uh, as far as improvements. And then we'll go from there. Uh, the last comment um, I want to make is I'm attending, um, well, Out of Africa event tomorrow, mm -hmm. which is something I enjoy. Uh, it's one of those um, fee-driven events, but the, the city does an excellent job. Um, Karen Rice is uh, amazing when it comes to these events. And, um, you know, keep in mind that a large amount of the staff that we rely on are part-time staff. And when you think about it, most of them, are, that's impressive from the get-go. I mean, there's no way the full-time staff could deal with that without uh, our part-timers. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the, young, the young lady taken over is a part-time person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to her prior to the meeting. Yeah. So, and the quality and and the qualifications on, on these folks are just impressive. They kind of circle around. They've been here and did some work, and then they did something else and come back, which speaks well, well of, of us as a city. So, what are you wearing tomorrow night? What am I wearing? I can't divulge that. I'm sorry. You'll have to show up to. to see. Oh, I'll be there. I just don't have any safari clothes, so <laughs> safari I'm wearing a pair of clothes. jeans and a shirt, and that's it. <laughs> and a cowboy knew, hat. Or I something. never knew there was uh, such a thing. You always dress up. So uh, yes, Fiesta Days uh, was well attended. Of course, we were competing with um, other events, such as typical when you do sure. these events. But I, I, there was like 500 plus people attending. Mm -hmm. A very successful event, and then our next major event will be in the fall. And then following that, we got the Halloween event, yep. and then uh, the Christmas events. So, uh, if there's nothing else to comment on, I think we've all commented out for the most yes. part. Um, 